In this video, we're going to be working on a Minimax tuner that came in for repair. Customer said that he had discolorations on the screen. He opened up the tuner to see what's going on with the screen. Maybe it's a loose connection. And he ended up ripping the LCD connector of the screen. The customer took this tuner to another shop and they were not able to help him out. So he sent it over to us in hopes that we can fix it. I do not know what's going on with the board or if this is something that we can fix. But let's take a look and see if we are able to save this device. I do see a broken connector and an attempt to fix that connector. We do not know if the screen is in good condition or if the screen is bad to begin with. Maybe the screen was what was bad. And now we have a connector issue. I did mention in a previous video that we cannot buy those screens from anywhere. I looked everywhere and we are not able to buy those screens. So the only place to get them is from donor devices. But for now, our problem is the connector and not the screen. Hopefully the screen is good and we are able to fix the connector. I do have a lot of donor boards that we can extract that connector from. And we're going to have to desolder the connector from the board and solder it back on the customer's board. I do not want to apply hot air from the top because we may end up burning that plastic connector. So we're going to heat off from the bottom to safely remove that connector. And then we're going to solder that connector back on the board using our soldering iron and not hot air. So let's see, we're going to start by, actually, if we start with visual inspection, we do see signs of flux. We do see some bridging. Any knocked off components, any missing components. I cannot tell. Everything looks good from this side of the board. I'm not going to worry about the rest of the board. We're just going to focus on the connector itself because the customer did say the tuner was working with discolorations. So hopefully nothing bad was done to that board except for that connector. And that's what I see right now. Let's put this on the side. And we're going to focus on this donor board so we can extract this connector without burning or damaging that connector. Now, if we hit up from the bottom, we're going to end up damaging or burning that SD reader, but I do not care. This is a donor board. We may damage this coil here. This is plastic. It will melt and burn away. And that's about it. Since we do not care about this board, it's okay. I'm not going to apply hot air from the top so we can save that connector. So we're going to apply hot air from the bottom. Let's see. Now I have the board extending outside my bench, see? And the other half is being held by weight. I want to be able to point my hot air station below that board. Let's apply some flux because flux helps with the flow of solder. And flux is always your friend, always. Fume extractor on. And let's do it. I'm currently applying hot air from the bottom. Now I think the board is only two layers. So it should not take a lot of heat to desolder that connector. It shouldn't. I do not want to bombard the board with 500 degrees Celsius. So I currently have my hot air station at 380C. If that doesn't work, then we may have to bump up heat. We want that connector safe, so we have to be patient. I think I'm going to bump up my heat because I do not feel the connector moving at all. 
How much heat do we have to apply? I always get that question. How much heat do I have to apply? You will get to know how much heat you need to apply. I started with 380, 390, it didn't work. I bumped up heat. Next time I work on this connector, I'll know how much heat to apply. So it all comes with practice. There's no specific number that I can tell you. Or I can give you. Awesome. We got it. Now we're going to go back to the customer's board and prepare it for the new connector. And how do we prepare that board for the new connector? That's a very good question. We're going to start by applying plugs. And we can use our NF.mini pen. I need a micro tip for this job, so we're going to be using the knife tip. I do not know what type of solder was used. We may still have unleaded, and that's why we are getting those bridges. Let's go over it again and again until it's perfect. When I apply solder, leaded solder, and I swipe over, we are really applying leaded and removing unleaded. They're both mixing, but in the long run, leaded is going to be more than unleaded. Let's get rid of the glare. And you know how to get rid of the glare now, since that video I did. Magic. Magic, right? Let's clean our knife tip and go over this one more time. Look at this. This pad does not look like it's needed, and that's why it's weak. It's not connecting to anything. All right, we should be good. Let me just focus on that one that is broken. We want to make sure it's not connecting to anything. And yes, it's a no connect, and that's why the pad is weak. If you look here, this pin or this pad is connecting with this wire, with this and with this. Same thing here, same thing here. This pad is connecting with this trace. This pad is connecting with this trace, but this one is empty. It's not connecting to anything. So it's neutral, no connect. Let's take that connector and place it over. Now to solder the connector without having to worry about the connector moving because we have a lot of pins to solder. What we're going to do is we're going to secure maybe the first and the last pin to hold that connector in place. And then we're going to go over all the pins. We already pre-applied solder on the pins under or on the pads under. And all we have to do is press on the pin against the pad and that pin will get soldered onto the pad. Maybe I can hold that connector with my finger because what's more precise than a finger? And just like that. And then I'm going to use the knife tip. And then we're going to go like that. Done. Maybe we can do this one also. Maybe we can do this one while at it. And this one while at it. Right? There's room for play. The connector is not bulletproof. It's not solid, so we can flex it a bit up, a bit down. We're not doing it by much. It looks 
like the pins are big under the microscope, but you are dealing with microscopic pads. Let's press and hold on that connector like this. And just go over the pins one by one. Press it down. We already have solder on the pad under. So solder is going to melt and then it's going to hold that pin. If not, then we're going to have to add more solder. No problem. But the important thing is that we are using a micro tip to do the job. If I want to do this job with my regular weller tip, look at the size of the smallest tip I have for weller. It fits three pins. I'm currently using the NF.mini pen. I went over it in a previous video. You can check out the video for more information. And you can purchase that pen from our website. Just log into northridgefix.com. We sell it along with a lot of other tools like hot air stations, soldering stations, power supplies, thermal cameras, grinding pen, and everything else. We have somebody peeking at the window because I have the sign closed on the door. I do not want people to interrupt, but the door is open. I just have the sign closed. If the person is smart enough, he'll come in. If not, then no problem. I can finish what I'm doing in peace. And this one is a no connect. You know it's a no connect because as soon as you apply heat onto it, it comes right off. But we can double check to make sure it's a no connect. I'll check the donor. All right, and let's go ahead and go over the pins. You see the pin is moving along with the pad. Solid, solid, solid. All the pins are solid. This one is solid, this one is solid. Very nice, very nice. Not even a single pin is weak. All the pins are solid, every single one of them. I just want to double check and make sure the other pad is in a connect. And we can do this by checking the donor board. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Or we can look after those two dots. One, two, we can look right after. And yes, the pad is in a connect. Right there, it's not connecting to any wires. And what about the second one? The second one is right above the circle. And that pad is in a connect as well. Look at this. It's not connecting from the bottom and it's not connecting from the top. And that's why those pads are weak. They are just hanging there for the looks of things, but they do not do anything. And they're not supported properly because they're not connecting to any lines or traces. So the job is done. We're all set. Now I can try to touch up on the sides if we have room, and I'm talking about this side here, the one on the top left and the top right, I do not know if I can reach those pads, but if not, that's okay. As long as we connect the LCD cable and we close the latch, that LCD cable is not going nowhere. This is a device that you should not open, ever. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be hard to touch up on the left or right, 
because those pads are covered. Usually from the factory, they get reflowed. Before you put the SD reader and all the other components, they get reflowed down in place. But right now we cannot reach the side pads and we're not gonna apply hot air from the bottom so we do not end up damaging other parts of the board. We have a customer. Let me just go and talk to him. The customer came in with an Xbox 360. I told him we do not work on Xbox 360s. It's not worth it for us. And he said, what would make it worth it? I said, if you pay $1,000, then I'll work on it. That's how I got rid of the customer. I do not work on Xbox 360s. We're gonna connect the screen. Let me go under the magnifying glass so I can do it properly. And the screen is in. Close the latch. And let's see. Are we gonna get a working display? Is there anything wrong with the display? Device is working, but the display has lines. <laughs> I knew it. I knew the problem would not just be the connector, but we have a problem with the display. And those displays we cannot buy from anywhere. We have to remove it off another Minimax tuner. I do have a lot in the shop here, so I need to look and see if I can grab a good LCD from any one of the donor devices that we have. To start with, I have a bag of Minimax tuners here, but I do not know if I have any screens inside. I do have one screen here. I do not know if that screen is good or not, but one way to find out. And the screen is broken. <laughs> so this one, I'm gonna mark it with an X. I should have an X on the back. I can still use it for parts because a lot of times caps, they go short on Minimax tuners. So I can use caps from here for the screen. And that's why I keep them. I have another screen here, LCD. And I do not know if this one is good or not, but we're going to have to find out. And the screen on this one is also bad. I wish I can just buy those LCDs. I'll have a hundred laying around here because we got those tuners in a lot. We're gonna mark this one with an X. Let's put it on this side. I should have done this from the beginning. Anytime we have a bad LCD, I should immediately mark it with an X so I do not end up searching which one is good and which one is bad. I have an X on this one, luckily. I do not know how that happened. And I have another Minimax tuner here. Let's open it. Maybe the screen is good on this one. I do not know why this one was salvaged. Okay, so this one did make a tone, but I do not see anything on the screen. So I do not know if the screen on this one is good or not. But we're going to have to try it. We are running out of options and we're gonna have to find the screen. Like I said, I have a lot of those tuners here in the shop, but I need to find one that has a good screen. If you are able to find the screen from anywhere, you can leave it down in the comments. I would love to buy a whole bunch of those screens. I mentioned once before that I bought from a vendor who had those screens in stock. They had three of them, so I bought them. I bought all three, and none of them worked. When I tried them, none of them worked. They all displayed a white screen. I'll tell you what the model number is. 
TFT 8K 4338F PC dash A1 dash E. Let me know. We're going to close the latch. And let's see. Is that screen good? I think the screen is bad. <laughs> what can you do? Let's mark it with an X. I have a feeling like we're gonna go over 200 Minimax tuners and none of them will have a good screen. Because I always use screens from donors. So I do not think I have any left or I'm not optimistic enough to believe that we have any more left. Okay, this one I can tell it has ink right in the middle and I do have an X on it, so that's good. That means I am doing my job marking those screens with an X, except for a few of them that I did not mark. I have another screen here. And I'm not seeing any ink marks on the LCD itself. So... I just need one good screen. That's it. One good screen. That's all I'm asking for. Yes. This one is perfect. This one is perfect. Awesome. Okay. You can see it. Okay, I'm touching the touch pads on the left and right. I should not touch them. But the screen is fully functional. If we can get rid of the glare from that light, we are not under the microscope, so I cannot just flip a switch. Okay? We're done. And that's it. We're going to end the video right here. If you know where I can buy those screens, let me know. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.